Caribbean inside, Caribbean inside, Caribbean inside, please check Caribbean inside. I am Ras Shortiai. I am a scientist, a musical scientist. I invented soca so that Caribbean people could have something to identify with wherever they go, any part of the world. Listen, you are viewing Caribbean Insight. Hello and welcome to another edition of Caribbean Insight. Uh, today with me in the studio, I have one of the most diverse Calypsonians of, of the Caribbean. Um, his name is Alphonsus Cassell, better known in the business as Arrow. I want to say welcome to the show. A welcome, it's more than a welcome actually, it's an honor for me to be here. Oh. It's long overdue. Oh, thank you. Um, tell us, uh, which one of the beautiful Caribbean islands are you really from? I'm from the volcanic island of Montserrat in the Eastern Caribbean. With only 39 square miles and 12,000 of the most beautiful, friendly people you have ever met. Um, uh, give us some of the early beginnings of uh, your career in the Calypso business? Well, I started experimenting, as most people do, in the shower. <laughs> from there, I, I, I got promoted to my living room because I'm, I'm a family, I'm from a family of nine, of which two of my older brothers were Calypso Kings of Montserrat. So there's also Calypso music in the house. Mm -hmm. Then I started at the Montserrat Secondary School into the local competitions in Montserrat, the Caribbean Kings of Kings show in Antigua, into Sparrow's original Young Brigade, Brigade tent at Rison Road, and from there the world. At what age was this when you were singing with Sparrow in TNT? 16. Started at 16. At 16? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is, I, I must say, very young. Yeah. Um, could you remember what was your major hit at the age of 16? Uh, somebody take with me, woman. Dance time is dance time, don't care where the fat and I want everybody to understand. Aye, you know aye, 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 aye. I, I was always on the upbeat, upbeat scene. Cause when I when I you know when I came to Trinidad I realized that a lot of people were singing more topical calypsos. Outside Sparrow and Kitchener and maybe Blakey. Everybody was more into humor or smut. So coming from Montserrat I think I had to be raise the tempo to be heard. One of your biggest singles, I must say, and the song that uh, we all know was Hot, Hot, Hot. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to sing a song like that? Well, actually, Hot and Hot is a, a strange song. Came under strange circumstances while I was touring Europe. Actually, I was in Holland and uh, only rehearsed eight songs. Mm -hmm. I had to realize that I had to do four sets, 40 minute sets in Holland. And uh, to extend the show, each night we go into rhythm breaks and so on. And outside it was cold, but the heat from, from the audience and the body and the party, everybody was steaming. So one night I went into a rhythm break and I said, how are you feeling? And somebody said, hot. Oh. And it started there, the next night it was hot, hot. The third night it was hot, hot, hot. <laughs> and it's, it, you know, that's how this, this song began. So this really came about off of a live experience. Right. Let's go to the video clip of hot, hot, hot. Yeah.
Greetings from TNT. I am Tigress. This is the original dance master. This is Marshall Montana. I'm Brother Valentino. This is Marcia Miranda. Caribbean Insight. Yes, I watch them all the time. They're bad. Caribbean Insight. Really is dynamite. Caribbean Insight. Really super. Was spite. Caribbean Insight. Enjoy day or night. Caribbean Insight. Dynamite. Hey! I must say I can feel the heat. Hey! It's oh, yeah. getting hot in here. I'm actually just sweating. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read somewhere where you were the first soca artist to ever be assigned to a major label. How did that happen? First I was assigned to a major label in Holland, which was uh, Red Bullet. And those are the people that did uh, over those Beatles songs, had a very big hit on the Billboard, uh, a, a whole medley. And then from there I went to Island Records. And I've been tossing around, I've been to London Records, Polygram, EMI, so I've been moving all over the place. Actually, you know, my, the, the plan for my music was always to take it beyond the Caribbean. So I was always experimenting with different rhythms, different beats, and I think that this attracted some of the major record companies. I think, I think this saw in me something that was not just a hometown sound, something that could be commercial and had commercial appeal. Um, I must say that's true because a lot of your music incorporates uh, some elements of salsa and um, I even was uh, listening to some tribal uh, sounds coming out of your music, even mm. the Cajun sound. Yes. Hey Parkaway, who did the arrangement of that music for you? Well that was done by my band leader Roland Richards and George Victory, but the original recording came out of Louisiana, where a lot of Cajun sounds are from, it's done by the, the Meters or the Neville Brothers. And uh, it's, if you notice, it's, it's similar to the soca rhythm. The Cajun influence, I must say, it's dynamic within the soca sound. Um, was this your idea or was it, did it come about because of a live experience that you had there in Louisiana? Well, I've, I've played with the Neville Brothers about four or five occasions. We played in Canada together along with Celine Dion. We did a, a corporate function for Discover Card. So we've been always meeting at Tipitina's in New Orleans and some of the brothers always telling me, look man, you know, take a shot at some of our music. So I took the challenge up and, you know, they loved it, I liked it and it's done well for me. And we love it too. <laughs> Thank you. I must say. Um, you have been the first uh, soca artist we had on Soul Train. Yes, that was when I had long time. Actually, in long time, we went up to number 23 on the British pop charts. And then one morning, about 2 a.m. my time, I got a call saying, look, could you get to London tonight? You're number 23 and you could get on top of the pops. And I said, I'll be there. And, you know, went there, we did Top of the Pops, we did Soul Train, we did the Terry Wogan show, which was like the equivalent to the Johnny Carson show. Mm -hmm. And that helped to catapult the record. We sold like, quite a lot of copies of Long Time in, in London that year. Um, from your uh, travels all over the world with the soca music, um, what has the response been towards your experimentation of uh, intermingling these different elements within soca. Very strong, very encouraging. Uh, just two years ago we went gold in, in Australia. Did over 500,000 copies of uh, the remix of Hot at Hot. I've toured Japan about three or four times. Uh, I've been to Morocco. I've been all over the world, you know, performing. And this has been basically on the strength of my music, in particular Hot at Hot. So I must say it's, it's encouraging. We still have a lot of ground to cover. But, you know, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're working hard at it and we, 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 are, we are hopeful. Let's say with the brother on.
It's too tight to think I want to get them Hold whining and coat tightening Twist it up, girl Twist it up, twist it up, girl Twist it up, turn 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 it up, girl Jump around, girl, yes, you 
Collaborations, you know, my, my big brother Justin has been a driving force behind the music. Also, the part of my band, Everton Reality Weeks, Rule and Richards, uh, and outside the Montserrat Connection, I did some collaborations in Trinidad with a uh, preacher. I've done collaborations with uh, Devon George, as Iowa George's brother, and I've done some collaborations in Barbados with uh, Edwin Yearwood and uh, Red Plastic Bag. So it's, you know, no one man is an island, so we fuse them, we all have the desire and the hope to totally internationalize soca music. And we, we don't want to be an eye man in doing it. We want all of us to be able to cross that bridge, make some money, and all create a better standard of living for all Calypsonians and soca singers. Uh, those words are words of wisdom. Uh, I think we should find some strength in them and keep pushing forward. It's not often practice, you know, but what I'm saying is, I just love the music that you have put together. It's, it's different, it's soca, but it carries so many different elements of different rhythms within it. Um, have you been to the South American uh, countries? Oh this yeah, music? definitely. Actually, uh, one of my favorite places for performing is in Colombia and South America because the audiences there are just unbelievable. We have done Guatemala, we have done Belize, we have done, done a few places in Central and South America and the response there is just unbelievable. And that is why you have the, the heavily influence of salsa into my music. And okay. uh, you know, as I said earlier, that we need to be able to not just keep soca to carnival, we need to be able to spread it and be able to get it into the main music forms and get it on mainstream radio and we, we knock it on every door. If you notice in some of, my, some of the movies you see that you find some of my music as part of the soundtracks and this is another avenue I'm trying to expose the music. Yeah, I, I, um, I read somewhere where you have done some soundtracks for some music and some jingles. Um, tell us a little bit about that as aspect of the soca music. Is there, is there um, avenues for soca music in that field that we are not tapping? Oh yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of avenues that we, we're not tapping in, in the soca industry. I, I think that too many of the, the soca singers are too, too concerned about being the, uh, a hometown hero. They're too concerned about winning a title and winning a crown. And I think that the business of soca music is like any music business and that there's a lot of avenues that are untapped. There are a lot of deals you can get, there are a lot of movie work, there's a lot of commercial work. And we, you know, we have to be able to take it beyond our people. I like that attitude you Because, have. you see, a, a lot of our people give us a lot of lip service, but, we, you know, they've not been able to actually take the lip service and push your hand in their pockets and really support the artists. I mean, if you look at the amount of West Indians who live in New York, if you look at the amount of records that we are selling, it, it, it is not... Uh, the ratio. The ratio is not right. Right, yeah. The ratio is not right, and I'm saying that it's, it's wonderful music. I mean, non-Caribbean people are embracing it, and we have to do something about the music before the music is no longer owned by us. Let's listen to I Have an Attitude by Arrow. Jumping attitude, a party attitude, and I see attitude to jump and get on bad, 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 bad. Hey, oh yo yo, oh yo yo, oh yo yo, oh yo yo. Oh, yo, yo. Give me 
to jump and get on bad, bad, bad. But in the meantime, um, you have a piece of music coming from your new CD. It's called Dancehall Queen. It's a sort of like a raga soca. Right, or, or dancehall, uh, dancehall, or dancehall soca as we call it. And uh, you know, I must say that uh, th this new CD, Rider Rhythm, has really been doing great for me. It has been my best seller since Hot at Hot, and that, that's a good woman. It is. Yes, because uh, even Attitude, Attitude has been riding the charts now for over 12 weeks and still going strong. We just got into some remixes of it and it looks like it's going to be here to stay. And I think Dancehall Queen is giving Attitude a run for its money. A run for its money. Um, for you out there, um, the CD is here, Ride the Rhythm, it's by Arrow. Um, all his latest music uh, with the incorporation of all the elements of salsa, Cajun music, all the Caribbean music. Please go out and check the CD. It's available at all your leading Caribbean record stores throughout the USA. I jam the girl and she jam me back. No, the girl, let me give me heart attack. The way how she wiggle, the way how she whine. The girl come to have a good, good time. She was a dancer queen. I was a king, so it would seem. Oh yeah, she was feeling nice. The girl come to party. of reggae and soca is fantastic it is it is it's 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 a young crowd is reacting a lot to that and we, we have to be able to cater you know almost from the womb to the tomb of course <laughs> hence you know that that's the reason for dance on queen yes it is it is it, it, it is um like the the new beats the new tempo yeah. within it um, again, I would say uh, the CDs out there, it's Ride the Rhythm. Go out and look for it, and let's ride the rhythm. Um, I want to say thank you for coming on the show. As I said earlier, it is an honor, and uh, as you know, we are listening to watching Caribbean Inside.
Iya. Ole, 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 ole. I'll see you guys next week. Yes, thank you very much, my brother. I roll. And you tuned into the man in the borrow. The girls call me Nara with no sorrow today or tomorrow. Dance all queen, the man, the powerful Calypsonian coming out the monster rat. Well, I'm the man in the borrow with no sorrow today or tomorrow. And I'm doing this one for all my girls coming down from monster rat. Yes, child. Thank you very much, brother Arrow, with your attitude album. Ride the rhythm. Go. Doing this one for all the mothers in the Caribbean. This one is for you. I'm Lady V and I hope you enjoyed the ride. Remember, you need to subscribe, like, and share to keep the culture alive. I'll catch you at the next Pit Stop.